Danny Smash! Danny Smash! Oh, I'm sorry, I was just uh, crunching some numbers for a client. Uh, my name is Danny Deals, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Poco Moss, the show where we give you just a little bit more. Um, the executive producer for today's broadcast is, of course, Hurricane Lopez. Um, he is my hero. He is my investment guru. And he is my mentor. And he's my heart. Um, Hurricane. Okay. Um, okay. The uh, question today is another one posed by a... Viewer from StockTwits, he says, Hello, Danny Deals. Uh, is UBX at the bottom after its catastrophic uh, Phase 2 wet AMD results? The stock went down from the low fours. It crashed to $2.50. And now, over the last three days, it's bled all the way down to the mid dollar sixties and a market cap way down in the 20 millions. Uh, how low can it go, Danny Deals? Is this a limbo situation, or will the limbo contestant break their back and fall to the ground in a heap? Can the company recover? Can the stock price stabilize? Is now the time to buy? Uh, a lot of the uh, intelligentsia online. Um, I don't know why I look like a floating head. Uh, something happened to my camera. And uh, seems to have been pointed down a little bit. Perhaps if I increase my posture to where it should have been anyway, it will assist in your being able to view me as not a severed head, but in fact a whole person with thoughts, dreams, and emotions. That's Danny Deals. Um, in any case, I digress. Um, people basically want to know, hey, where's the bottom of this, of this turd? And um, I say don't lose hope. Basically... Um, AMD never looked that good from phase one. Uh, they needed uh, rescue doses and, um, you know, it just wasn't as effective. It wasn't as durable. The The, the data on DME, um, always uh, diabetic macular edema, is that what it stands for? It always looked way better. And that's what we saw in the last readout. And we have the DME readout at 48 weeks um, coming up. And management said that's going to be next month. And they already said they're going to start the next uh, Phase 2B trial on DME. So they're they're confident. They know what the data looks like. And I think they're telegraphing um, that it looks a hell of a lot better than the AMD data. At least I hope so. Um, if the 48-week uh, DME data is bad and, like, terrible bad, um, this company's done. Um, they don't have anything else in the pipeline. This pig is going to go to zero. And they're going to make it into bacon. So, um is the stock at a bottom right now? That's that's the question. Um, and I'm going to try to answer that for you. Uh, I forget the uh, person's name who asked me this. I have that over on another computer. But um, in any case, I appreciate the question. And um, I am going to try to answer that for you. So when we got the bad news um, on the stock, uh, obviously the thing fell off a cliff from uh, 415 and it fell all the way down to $2.50 and I believe that's going to be a key level um basically you saw this big buy here uh so smart money stepped in to buy I would say some smart money stepped in to buy here some retail doubled down here um, and then basically as news broke and the late bloomers and the late writhers, little snoothies, um, woke up, they just kept selling. And basically over the course of that day, um, the stock dropped all the way down to two bucks and found some support, uh, Tuesday, the 28th, again, big sell off in the morning. Um, I feel like this is probably, um, just more uh, retail capitulation. Um, they are obviously stop people out already at two bucks. Um, stop people out. You know, this is basically the tale of stop loss and uh, where are you going to put them and how low are they going to go to trigger them and how many shares are they? I don't know how what the short interest is. It's um, really hard to uh, see what data is accurate after a reverse split. And, um, in any case, I don't know how many shares they'd sold. I know they recently authorized the sale of some more shares, but, um, 
if you look at the daily, um, the reason I think we might have a bottom um, down here in the mid 160s is basically um, 170 was a key number um, in the beginning of the day. It formed some support, then resistance, support, um, then resistance again. And it just kind of flipped along those lines, support and resistance um, all day. Um, 169 also was a critical number. A uh, lot of the day, there was a channel between 169 and 170, and the stock was trading there. So I see smart money, a lot of buying pressure um, coming in at that 169, 170 level uh, today, and volume uh, greatly decelerating. Uh, we tested, we went below 165. I just think that's smart money, just... Um, stopping out uh, retail way down here um, who bought the stock probably when it dropped um, that's what often happens uh, it drops retail comes in here there's probably a hell of a lot of volume in this candle um, yeah there's 1.15 million in this candle then you see a redump 270 and then another uh, big buy here so you know retail is buying here a lot of retail and then they're stopping them out down here today at uh, 165 and 170 and then smart money is accumulating all these shares here and then um there was a big dump out at the end at the bell um again pushed the stock uh, just below um 165 so you take a look this they were trying to go for it um this candle it was only 7,000. This candle, they accelerated to 14,000. Um, this candle, they had 9,000 shares. And then finally, um, this candle at another 9,000 shares, they were able to push the stock down to 164. I believe, again, stopping uh, retail out right at the end of the day. They then snapped up those shares really quick to close at 167. Stock is pushed up to $1.74 after hours. Uh, be careful with that fool's gold. Um, if you take a look at the uh, latest after hours trades on the NASDAQ website, um, you could see there were some uh, only 11,000, um, what was it? I think it was only 11,000 shares um, traded hands after hours. So um, I, I saw it earlier. I don't know where I, where it's located exactly. But um, in any case, I think it was only 11,000 shares in, in comparison to over half a million um, traded on the day. So, but the, the good thing here, um, is volume was really decelerating. So the dump is over basically and capitulation is there and the stock is leveling out. At least that's my analysis. Um, volume had really dried up, um, coming into the news. Everybody I think was a bit nervous. Only 127,000 shares traded, um, ahead of the news. Then, um, of course, 6 million shares traded in just this huge dump, um, opened at 222, closed down almost 30 cents on 6 million, uh, shares traded. Then, uh, 1.9 million shares traded. I think this is mostly the end of, um, retail dumping the stock, and uh, I think smart money really starts to accumulate here in the 170s. And then, um, of course, dump down under 165 and stop people out. Is one, is 165 the bottom? Um, that's what people want to know. Is this little bump up to 174 after hours real? I don't think so. Um, looked like most of the shares were trading uh, more like um, high 160s after hours. And then there was a little bit of a bid rig there at the end to pump it up after hours. And that probably means they want to create some retail buzz for the morning. They're like, Oh my God, that's in. They want to draw, draw retail back in possibly for another mini pump and dump. Possibly they just want to kick you square in both nuts yet again. Um, but I think, uh, you know, I don't think most people expected the data to look like it did. And I don't think most people expected this drop. So I think um, smart money got killed uh, right along with uh, retail. This was not a heavily shorted stock. Um, I think most people expected good data. Um, is this where you should jump in? Uh, I don't know. Um, stock can always go lower. Uh, I, I like um, 250 as a key level um, for several reasons. Um, let me move my big giant head out of the way so you can see this just un poco better. Um, move myself down. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm moving moving things around here, folks. Um, 
But anyway, I'll go down there. Um, hopefully you guys can still see this. But anyway, um, so why do I find 250 to be a key level? You see it's uh, been support and resistance uh, quite a few times. Now, you do see the stock dip down uh, below that level here. And you also see um, here it finds support at 250. It's trading along 250 uh, pretty good here. It just drops into the low twos a couple times, but again, pops right back up to exactly 250. That's where it was before that big dump um, when some, uh, and that's where it was right after the big dump and that's where it's found support. Now, when the stock tanked here in October, um, it stopped tanking at exactly 250. When the stock sold off after the failure on the uh, phase two AMD trial the other day, it stopped sliding at exactly 250. Um, so you can see that key level coming in again. Again, exactly 250 um, is where this uh, red candle um, closes here. And the low went all the way down to 222. So you saw um, smart money just snapping up shares again back up to 250. Could have been a lot of retail buying as well. Um, I'm certainly not smart enough to... Uh, decipher those statistics. Um, again, I'm sorry, my head is so low. Generally, I, generally speaking, I have a huge head. It's almost a size eight in a hat. I can never even find a hat. But um, anyway, I'm a big curly headed freak. Um, my head is a bit low in the picture, but you're just going to have to deal with that because I'm providing so much wonderful, valuable information. I know um, you are willing to compromise and just meet me in the middle. It would definitely be prudent at this juncture to stick with me. Anyway, um, is that the bottom for the UBX stock? I have no idea. A lot of people online are saying 160. Other people are saying 150. Certainly hope it doesn't hit 150 all the way down from 415. Um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we have data coming up that is more important than this readout. The DME was always a better indication. Uh, we also have the follow on with AMD with the anti VEGF. I always probably getting the acronym wrong, but anyway, um, I, I'm, I added some more, um, in the one seventies. I feel good about the stock. I feel good about management. I feel so, so about the product. But um, again, it's even more of an all or nothing than it was. Uh, we have one product in the pipeline. We were looking at two indications. Um, now, at least the street is probably looking more at the one indication. So this 48-week readout we have coming up in April is even more critical than ever. If it looks uh, really, really good, um, I could definitely see the stock uh, punching back up into the fours. Um, this 460 level has been resistance a few times. It's also been near support. So I could definitely see us, um, if the data is blockbuster, challenging this 460 level. Um, also, another key level that um, is the $6 level. So uh, it's been, uh, it, it was nice support here came down off of the six back again to the mid fours. Um, and when this stock's fallen, it's usually fallen to 250. I think this fall all the way down to 165 or so is going to be short lived, assuming the data for DME looks good. Um, so I'd be comfortable buying here if you're confident in that data. Um, that's of course the $64,000 question because I was uh, somewhat confident in the AMD data management seem to put a brave face on it. But then again, in the call, you could see management just wind completely sucked out of him. Um, looked like, uh, you know, looked like a funeral, um, then not a, you know, drunken Irish one, like a really somber, um, funeral. But anyway, um, we have data coming, uh, in April. And, um, if that data looks really good, expect the stock to definitely go back up through 250 challenge probably low fours and then i would like to see us break through uh six dollars and i think that range from say four dollars and fifty cents to six dollars is a natural place for this stock to live um if we get some good data and we can uh move forward uh sell some more of those shares from uh Ka that cowan has been authorized to sell of course um you know, probably they could be diluting the hell out of us selling them down here. I know that was just authorized the other day. So I know probably, uh, management is not super excited, but, um, Hey, they management probably knew this data was crap, uh, back when they put out that PR anyway. So I never know what management is doing. 
I never know what they're thinking. They're probably always playing chess and I'm not even playing checkers. I am simply crunching my numbers like the Incredible Hulk. I do it for you. I appreciate you watching. Un poco mas. My name is Danny Deals for executive producer Hurricane Lopez. Thanks for tuning in to this little uh, UBX update. Is it bottoms up from here or more... Uh, more falling, more capitulation, more consolidation. Will we break down below a dollar and fifty cents and stop out some more weak turds? Um, certainly possible. Uh, certainly very, very possible. Um, until we get good news, uh, we only see bad news. The, the market only wants to know what you've done lately. What's the last uh, shiny headline? Um, and that's all they care about. And that's uh, you know retail investors and you know. Every investor, frankly, even uh, institutional investors, even smart money, many are very reactive. Um, many are, uh, you know, they, they overreact. We all overreact to things. We get, uh, you know, too emotional about things that we don't see. There's another potential for a good readout uh, just around the corner. So if you want to stick with the stock, uh, please do. I would definitely uh, DCA and add down here if you intend to stick with the stock. Um, it's at an all-time low and... Uh, if you believe in it, um, there's really no reason not to buy it right now. Um, if you're on the fence, just maybe hold your shares. If you don't believe in it, um, maybe try to wait for a little pop that's going to lead into the next readout and then dump then in anticipation of the next uh, disaster. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, hold on to my shares. I just added, if it uh, goes down near $1.50, I will definitely add again heavily. I hope you guys have a great night. It's March 29, 2023, 6.25 p.m. out here on the West Coast. That's 9.30 out in New York. Hope it's a great night wherever you are. You guys, be safe, be sane, do your own research. This is definitely not financial advice. And um, it probably barely made any sense. So thanks again for watching.